Welcome to a new Java EE tutorial. In this video I will show you different ways to manage and use JNDI resources in Java EE. Before we begin let's talk about JNDI resources in general. JNDI stands for Java Naming and Directory Interface and is used to locate resources such as mail sessions, JDBC data sources or properties on a server. To locate a resource, each one has a unique name. When calling a lookup, the application server provides the resource that is bound to the JNDI name. Let's create a new resource on our Glacier server. There are three ways to do that. The easiest way is over the admin console, but you can also do it via an asadmin command as well as using a resource descriptor file. We will add the resource via the asadmin console, but I will provide you the asadmin command and the resource descriptor file as well. First, you open up your Glacier console at port 4848 and navigate to resources, JNDI and then custom resources. Here we will add a new resource. First press new and enter a JNDI name. That's the name we use to find the resource from our application. I will call it properties slash example. Next is the resource type. You can choose between primitive types like integer or boolean, but we will use a more complex of type, the properties. To define the name value sets for the properties object, we will create a new property down here. We will add two values. The first will be prop1, so the first property with the value test1. The second value will be prop2 and test2, so we can differentiate between them. Then we move back up and press OK. Our resource was successfully created. Let's take a quick look at the asadmin command we could also use to create the custom resource. It's the create custom resource command and we define the rest type, the factory class and the properties as we've defined them on the UI. Down here this is the name of our JNDI resource. The same is possible by using the Glassfish resource XML files. Here we just define the custom resource, define factory class, rest types, JNDI names and the property sets. And both would lead to the same outcome. And let's head over to our Java EE application to work with the resource. I will add a command button to our empty page here which will simply call a method in our bean so we can do some stuff there. Our bean will be called property bean and here we will call a method which we call jndi. Let's create this bean. Before we create this bean we will create an egb called property egb. This will be a local stateless bean and in here we will inject our JNDI resources into a private properties object which we call simple properties. To let the Glasses server know that this is the variable he should inject the property to, we add the add resources annotation coming from the JavaX annotation package and here we say the name of our JNDI resources is properties slash example which is the name we added on the admin console earlier on. Now we create a new method called getProp1, which should return us the property1 from our properties set. And this will return properties.getPropertyProp1. So basically you work with this property object as with every other Java Utils property object. We will now create our property bean and this will be a managed view scope bean. Here we will inject our property EGB and create the method that we call from our JFSF page which was called JNDI. And now we just do a simple system out to see the property variable was correctly read from the JNDI resources. In this case we will get short message on our console here. We add it to the server. Let's head over to our example page where we have our submit button. If I press this and we see 
the value test1 which was assigned to the property name prop1. So this is the easiest way to get the JNDI resource but it's not always possible to use annotations and sometimes you want to refresh your resources which in this case is not done automatically. If we try to change our property from test1 to test11 and save this reloading the site and pressing submit again it's still one. This is because in our bean we inject our property EGB and this EGB will be created once, the properties will be injected and therefore they are stay there until the application is redeployed. So the properties are never refreshed. If we really need a refresh or if we want to do the lookup manually, we can do a lookup with the context provided by Classfish. So we will do this now. We create a simple method called refresh. Context from the JavaX naming package. Initial context, which will be a new initial context from JavaX naming package. This will throw the naming exception, which we just ignore here. Now we can fill up our properties variable with an initial context.lookup command. And here we just have to enter the name of our property, so the J and the I name, which is properties slash example. This will return us an object because the lookup does not know what type of resources we used and we will cast this to a properties object. This is basically what is done with this annotation and now we want to automatically refresh our property so we will create a scheduler which will run every five seconds and we say every minute as well as every hour and as I see there's a small typo here so we save that and now we switch back to our side now we call the submit and we see the output is test 11 we will switch to our property page change this to 111 save now the five seconds need to pass by reload the page and pressing submit again you see it's now refreshed that's all for now i hope you enjoyed watching the video if you have any questions feel free to write a comment and i hope i see you soon